Here's another KeepsakeCrafts.net video for House of Gems. Today we're making these pretty earrings using Swarovski Crystal Snowflakes. So to make these earrings today, I'm going to give you several options and ideas for pursuing your own designs. So instead of an exact list of supplies, here are some general supplies. You will definitely need, of course, for earrings, a couple of ear wires. To finish your earrings, you'll need two each crimps, crimp covers, and wire protectors. And today we're going to be using some monofilament thread for, um, for stringing our beads. You'll also need, of course, some Swarovski crystal snowflakes, and I'll tell you more about those in a minute. And then some other things you might possibly want to use, but you'll see, you can really use whatever you have and love some little silver plated spacer beads, some colored glass bicones, some Swarovski crystal bicones, or even some pearls. So first of all, let me show you the Swarovski crystal snowflakes. These ones are the smallest ones that they make as a pendant with a drilled hole. These are the 20 by 17 millimeter snowflakes, and they're the smallest one they make and they're probably about as big as I would go for a focal point on an earring but they were so pretty I couldn't resist and then this is the 25 millimeter snowflake and it's a nice pendant maybe a little big for earrings although some people might disagree and there actually is one that's bigger than this it's a 30 millimeter snowflake so this measures 30 millimeters so you can see how much bigger that one would be, and that would be a lovely pendant. It took some time, I probably spent an hour before I even started shooting this video, to kind of play with my supplies and see what kinds of designs I could come up with. First of all, there's a couple of different ways that you can hang your pendants. This is a pinch bale, and I'm just going to actually pull this apart and show you what it looks like. It's just what it sounds like. It's a little V-shaped piece with teeth on either end. And when you have a pendant like this that has a hole, the teeth go in either side of the hole, and then you pinch. Just like it sounds. You pinch it, and now you have a bail on your piece. And it's not a bad idea, once you have your design all settled, to add just a tiny bit of super glue into the hole, the tiniest bit, like use a pin, and just glue that in so it's not going to go anywhere. You wouldn't want to lose your Swarovski crystal. So there's that. Or for this one, I used a jump ring. And I made sure that once, it's a pretty tight fit, but I made sure that once I got the jump ring in there, I took my pliers and actually twisted that jump ring until the split was inside the snowflake. But the pinch bail kind of just adds a little something more. And there are nice ones you can find, pretty fancy ones with, with different shapes on the ends. So I decided to use monofilament thread. Uh, and the beauty of monofilament is that it's clear and you can't see it. That's also the frustration and aggravation of working with it. So what I would suggest you do if you're going to work with monofilament, is get yourself a scratch piece of paper and a sharpie, and then you put the end down on the paper, and you can just color in like the end inch or so. Also, this stuff isn't expensive, so you know, cut yourself a good long piece. I probably cut eight to ten inch pieces for these, uh, so that I'd have plenty. So again, I thought I would show you some different options. Now this larger one, I thought this would make a really pretty pendant. Especially if you have any little girls who are in love with Frozen, then this would make a really special necklace for them, perhaps for a Christmas gift. And you'll see how this is all put together. It's just one piece of monofilament thread strung through some pearls, some crystals, and then finishing off stringing both ends through a pearl and two crystals, and then finishing with a crimp, um, a wire protector. And because the monofilament is fine, both ends will go through that wire protector, and then through back through the crimp, crimp it and cover it all with a crimp cover. 
But you know, you also could add in anything you want. How about some silver beads? That would be pretty. You know, really, the possibilities are endless for how you could design this. But I thought this would be a really pretty necklace. So now you've got this. You use that wire protector as a bail, and you could string it onto a chain. You could string it onto some bead stringing wire and have uh, beads and crystals on either side. And then here's just basically the same thing, but in a smaller version on both of these. This one with the jump ring. I have three blue glass bicones from House of Gems, and then a Swarovski crystal, another glass bicone, and that will finish it. But this is the one I'm going to show you how to make today. I just I liked just the little tiny touch. There's only three blue beads on here, but I thought they gave it a very nice icy kind of frozen look. So first of all, cut yourself about an eight inch piece of monofilament thread. And then to make life easier on yourself, color the ends with black Sharpie. Next, add either a jump ring or a pinch bail to your 17 by 20 millimeter Swarovski crystal snowflake. And then string on either side of it a Swarovski crystal 4 millimeter clear bicone, a 4 millimeter blue glass bicone, and another Swarovski crystal clear. And then both ends we're going to hold together. When I'm stringing two ends together though, I like to have them offset just a little. And that actually makes it easier than trying to stuff both ends at once into a bead. If you have them offset by just about an eighth of an inch. So one goes into my six millimeter Swarovski Crystal Clear Bicone. And see how the other one just followed right along. And then I'm going to add a four millimeter glass, blue glass bicone. Both of these ends are going to go through a crimp and then both ends are going to go through a wire protector. So in one end and out the other and then those two ends go back through the crimp. And you know you can use any colors if you want them to be for Christmas you could combine them with red that would be gorgeous and very classic or an emerald green or really any color you love, purple would be pretty. You could use instead of silver, uh, you could use gold accents. I always think of silver as something you know icy and cold, but gold with the clear would be very elegant as well. Okay, once we're back through the crimp, we're just going to pull all this up, snug, back it off just a tiny amount. And then really you can treat this monofilament just the same way you treat any bead stringing wire. You're just going to crimp it, give it a good squeeze, give that a tug and make sure that it's secure. And then trim those ends. Use crimping pliers to pick up a crimp bead, a crimp cover, slide it over that crimp and squeeze gently. Then the only thing left to do is open the loop of your ear wire and add that wire protector. Now if you find your uh, snowflake isn't facing forward you can kind of adjust the loop of the ear wire until it it's aiming in the right direction and you're done.